So after this exhaustive uh, panel discussion, we move ahead and uh, we have a session on bone marrow transplantation in India, emerging trends and challenges. May I request Padma Bhushan, Dr. Suresh Advani, Director, Medical Oncology, Jaslok Hospital and Research Centre, Mumbai, to please come for his thoughts. Huge round of applause, actually. Two up, hotel boys, two hotel boys. Padma Bhushan, Dr. Suresh Advani, is an oncologist with, who has pioneered hematopoietic stem cell transplantation in India. Struck by poliomyelitis at the age of eight years, the wheelchair using doctor studied at GMC, Mumbai, where he obtained his MBBS and MD medicine degrees, following which he worked at the Tata Memorial Hospital for many years as a medical oncologist. Now he consults at the Raheja Hospital. He has gained experience in the field of bone marrow transplantation from the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center, Washington. Dr. Advani is presently the Director, Medical Oncology of Jaslok Hospital and Research Center. Working in the field of oncology for the last 44 years, he has established and developed the field of medical oncology in India. Dr. Advani is a pioneer in pediatric oncology and bone marrow transplant in India, the concept of clinical trial and phase one, phase two, phase three clinical trials in India. Dr. Advani has a collaboration project with National Cancer Institute, the US, in acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Dr. Advani has initiated the molecular and targeted treatment of cancer in India with a credit of 650 articles published in national and international journals. Dr. Advani has established the Medical Oncology Center at the Tata Memorial Hospital, the Jaslok Hospital, and the Raheja Hospital, Mumbai. Dr. Advani has a collaboration with basic scientists at TMH and CRI and he has established the DM course in medical oncology at the Mumbai University. Management of cancer patient with empathy, smile and love. He has established an NGO, which is V-Care, helping hand for patient, financial as well as psychological help. NGOs are also involved with cancer awareness programs. Dr. Advani is the recipient of the Padma Shri in 2002, Padma Bhushan in 2012 and the Dhanvantri Award in 2002. May I request Dr. Advani to please proceed. Good evening, colleagues. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to listen to all the discussion which went before in an understanding that how the medical application is going to improve over a period of time. I'm quite optimistic that whatever we discussed will ultimately result in the elimination of the negative balance into a positive balance. And ultimately, we will be able to deliver. I think what is really lacking is the difference between the city and the rural areas. All of us know that you want the best of the treatment, you will receive it in India. No question on that. But you have to go to a very selective institute to receive the best of the treatment. This is not so in the developed countries. Because of the abundance of the whole sub financial support, they are able to establish uniformly all over the country a uniform medical system so that ultimately each one of their citizen can receive the best of the treatment. And I think that's a major difference which uh, I can see. Coming to my subject, I would like to uh, share with you that in oncology... Can we have the slides, please? Yeah, in oncology, there has been a tremendous progress I am in the field for the last 40 years now. And I have seen how we used to treat the patients. We had only two or three drugs, which we used to use it and try and get some treatment. And today, we are sitting on a plethora of the number of the new drugs, number of the new molecules which are coming up. And that's how 
we are able to really get the be better results. And I can tell you in some diseases where the results have tremendously improved. Some of the diseases like childhood cancers, the disease like leukemia, lymphoma, over a period of time, we have seen the change. In my first year of practice at Tata Memorial Hospital, we treated something like 17 or 18 odd patients of acute lymphoblastic leukemia. And today I know that all of them are dead. But this has changed today. Today, 80% of acute lymphoblastic leukemia are going to get cured and are getting cured in India and receiving the best of the treatment. Similarly, the diseases like Hodgkin disease, chronic myeloid leukemia, and so many other diseases where the whole thing has dramatically changed. The outlook has totally undergone the change. Change in the sense that chronic myeloid leukemia, when I started the practice, we used to look at them. Patient used to look very well. Chronic myeloid leukemia, patient is happy. We were happy that we are giving him just the capsule in those days, hydroxyurea, and patient will live, but live for how long? Three years. At the end of three years, all chronic myeloid leukemia used to die. But with a simple discovery and understanding of the biological process, whereby we learn that there's a balanced translocation of the gene which was giving rise to the abnormal protein which was responsible for chronic myeloid leukemia and the development of the simple small molecule which prevented this change allowed us to uh, today achieve the long-term survival in chronic myeloid leukemia. Today, in my clinic, I will see every day patients coming that they are living for 18 years, 20 years, 22 years in the, with the chronic myeloid leukemia. And they are taking just one tablet a day. It's easier than the diabetes or blood pressure. So you can see what a change it has happened. Some of these diseases, like chronic myeloid leukemia, when we started bone marrow transplantation, those days, chronic myeloid leukemia did not have treatment. So we started doing bone marrow transplantation. And I'll talk to you. I think probably the slides are not there. Okay, that's fine. I can uh, just tell you, uh, what is this uh, bone marrow transplantation? Bone marrow transplantation is nothing but the transfer of the stem cells from, from the one person to another person, or even the same person, he receives his own stem cells. In contrast to all the solid organs, solid organs transplant is totally different than the bone marrow transplant. Why, what is the difference? But essentially, the single stem cell can multiply and develop the full bone marrow. So it can develop the red cells, it can develop the white cells, it can develop the platelets, and the whole blood. One is stem cells. It can multiply, produces the bone marrow, which is full in our bones, and ultimately produce the, all the blood products. That is what is the bone marrow transplantation, which is nothing but the stem cell transplantation. And how do we get the stem cells? Previously, I remember when we started the transplant at our center, we used to, under anesthesia, from the donor, we used to take out the bone marrow with multiple needle punctures and get the stem cells. Today, the technology has improved. We can get it from the peripheral blood. Peripheral blood contains 1% of the cells which are stem cells. And by the centrifuge, we can separate these uh, uh, out and uh, collect enough quantity of the stem cells. And again, we talk about, when we talk about transplantation, we talk about either autologous. Autologous means his person own stem cells. What we do is, there are some diseases which require high dose chemotherapy to eradicate the disease. And if you give the high dose chemotherapy, not only the tumor cells will die, but the patient's bone marrow also will be eradicated. And therefore, patient will not be able to live. In order to prevent that, 
what we do is very simple. We first collect the stem cell from the patient. These stem cells are collected, frozen. We can keep them for number of years. And then give the patient very high dose, lethal dose of the chemotherapy. With that, the tumor cells die and the bone marrow, patient's marrow also die. But immediately after the effect of the lethal dose of chemotherapy, we introduce to the patient the stem cells which we have collected and frozen. And these stem cells have a capacity to go into the bone marrow and repopulate, multiply, and ultimately produce the normal marrow. So that is what we call it autologous bone marrow or stem cell transplantation. The only factor which really is the hurdle in during this treatment is the period of about two to three weeks where the patient's white cell count is zero, platelets are zero, and red cells are also zero. And therefore, they are replaced for the time being. And also, if the patient develops infection, the infection is aggressively treated. And I was very happy to listen today to the lecture by Dr. Raja, that how he mentioned that how today very easily we can really uh, identify the infection. And I think that will be a great thing as far as the bone marrow transplantation is concerned. Because we are dealing with a period of two, three weeks where there's a zero WBC count. Any infection is possible. And just now, most of the time, we get the, identify the infection. It takes about 48 hours to really identify and the sensitivity. While if you have the technology by which you can identify the infection so fast, I think that will be a great boost for the bone marrow transplantation. Similarly, we call it allogenic bone marrow transplant. What is allogenic bone marrow transplantation? The stem cells are taken out from the donor and given to the patient. Why do we transfer from one person to another, to the patient? Because the patient's bone marrow itself is diseased. Like leukemia, some of the lymphoma, they, are, they have occupied the bone marrow completely. They don't have their own stem cells also. So in such a situation, we want to eradicate the tumor cells or leukemic cells. What do we do? We can give the patient very high dose chemotherapy. With that, all his leukemic cells will die. But patient has to live. So he has to get the stem cells. And we don't have the stem cells from his own. And therefore, we collect the stem cells from the donor. And how do we identify the donor? We identify donor again with the molecular or so-called genomic studies. And I think they are a great uh, help to all of us that we identify the donor which is identical to the patient, which means that the patient's body will not reject the donor's marrow or stem cells. So those stem cells are given to the patient after eradicating the leukemic cells and then allowed to multiply within the body and the patient gets cured. And I can tell you that today, in some of the leukemias where the life was always at risk, that means the survival was zero, today at least 80% of them go through the transplant and survive a normal life. So I think that's really when you see such patients going through the whole process and coming out of it, it's a real the movement of joy. So the other things which are really happening, happening in the field of stem cell transplantation is to how to really get the stem cells, not only from brother and sisters, but also from all over the world, the donors. Just like the blood donors require the identification of the subgroups A, B, and A, B, and O. Similarly, for the stem cell transplant, we have also what we call it HLA typing. So if we identify the donor's HLA types, we can select from anywhere in the world the donor who is exactly matching the patient. And this is what we call it unrelated 
identical HLA identical donor and that has really gone a big way because nowadays the families are small so brothers and sisters are usually not available as a donor so the base donor will be from the public where the donor registries are there. They have got about 50 lakhs people where the HLA typing has been done and kept. So I think uh, it is uh, really one of the procedure which was introduced right in, we did the first bone marrow transplant in India somewhere in 1981. And today there are at least about 100 institutes in India who are doing the bone marrow transplantation, whether it's autologous, allogenic, and unrelated donor bone stem cell transplant. I think this is just uh, in short to tell you that autologous can cure some of the diseases like Hodgkin disease, lymphomas, and Ewing sarcoma. These are all childhood tumors. And the allogenic, where you transfer the stem cells from the donor cures the leukemias, some of the leukemias and myelomas where the disease is in the bone marrow. So I think, uh, I'm sure all of you must be waiting now for the next function to come up. And with these few words, I would like to thank all of you that in spite of, after listening so many lectures from all the learned speakers, today you are, you have uh, given the grace, gracing for this uh, small lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Arbani, for, for blessing us. This is a real pleasure for us for having with us so, and you have really given us tremendous inputs for this so actually. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, can we have? Uh, yeah. Yes. So this is a small token of appreciation from our side. And this can we have a round of applause, please? Uh, can you have a standing ovation for him, actually, what he has done, actually, for him?